Children, follow me. We have been liberated from Egypt, and we are on our way to the promised land. Yes, promised land. Here we go. Maybe we'll be there by nightfall. Let's see, right this way. Um, oh, uh, wrong way. Let's go this way, this way. Okay, turn around, turn around. Boy, we've kind of been walking for a while. Do you guys think he knows where we're going? No. Um, this way. It's this way. This way. This way, people. Yep. Right over. You know, we've been the, walking for a couple the, days now. We haven't had any right food here. yet. Are you starting to get hungry? I'm kind of starting to get hungry. Oh, I could really use like a juicy hamburger. Uh, this way. Some french fries. Maybe like a strawberry milkshake. Big piece of watermelon. We've been walking for a long time. I'm hungry. Are you getting hungry? Yeah. Maybe it would have been better if we'd never left Egypt. At least we had food when we were in Egypt. We're gonna die of hunger out here. God. God. What's up, Moses? I think it is time we do something about this food situation. Why? It's only been like three days. Three days is a long time, right? Well, the children are getting hangry. We need to do something. Okay, let me think. (gasps) What is it? It's a bird. I will rain down bread and meat. Oh. The people should gather enough food for the day. If they take too much, it will spoil. Hey, look, look out. Here it comes. Man, uh, what is this? That is what we shall call it, manna. Manna. Children, let's head this direction. Bring the food you found. We're gonna sit here in the circle. What did you find? You found bread. You f- oh, there's more coming. You found quail. Let's have a seat. All right, can I hold that for you? Thank you, come have a seat. Let's see what rained down from heaven. Thank you. Come have a seat, look. Special bread, wafer-like bread. This looks like some kind of bird. I think it's a quail. A squeaking quail. What do you think? Does this seem like this could really happen? No, the Bible tells us this is what happened. The people had finally left Egypt. They were free. They no longer had to live under Pharaoh. And they were wandering in the wilderness and they had a promise of a land that was gonna be for just them. But they started walking and there wasn't any food. And there actually wasn't even any water that they could drink. Moses had to take his staff and touch the rock so they could have water. But there was nothing to eat, there was nothing to drink. And pretty quickly, they started kind of complaining. You guys don't ever complain when you get hungry, do you? Not really? Oh, oh, not really. No! I know I complain when I get hungry. Parents, they're saying, grown-ups, they're saying, no, never. We never complain when we're hungry. The Israelites started complaining, and God heard their cries. And God said, okay, I'm gonna rain down quail and manna. Quail is kind of like a bird, like a chicken kind of. And manna for you to eat, but listen, you are only supposed to take what you need for one day. Do you think the people listen to God? Do you think they only took what they needed for one day? You're all shaking your head no. We know that feeling, right? It's like when you go through the line at the potluck at church and you're like, ooh, if I don't take this now, it's not gonna be here when I come back. And your plate's overflowing. You know what I'm talking about? 
God was working with the people to teach them to rely on him and to only take what they needed, to take enough for one day. And when they reached the promised land, so for 40 years, that is my entire life, my entire life they wandered in the wilderness and they relied on God for manna and quail. You think you get tired of leftovers. Manna and quail for 40 years, God provided for them. And when they reached the promised land, Ava, do you have my jar? God told them, they finally reached the place they were going. He said, take a jar. God said, take a jar. And God told them, put a piece of manna inside a jar and keep it with you so that you remember for all of those years in the wilderness that I provided you with enough. Isn't that a great word, enough? I've been thinking about that word this week because our instinct is for more and more and more and God worked with the Israelites for 40 years on this idea of enough. God hears our cries too, the same way that God heard the cries of the Israelites and God responds to us with enough. I want you to think about that. Let's pray together. Dear God, we are so thankful for these stories of you and your people and how you stuck with the people through hard times and how you listened to their cries and you responded to them and you showed them that if they believed in you, you would give them enough. Help us to know that you hear our cries too and you provide us with enough as well. And also because so many of us have privilege and more than we need, help us to be your eyes and your ears and your heart so that when we see people, we can respond in a way to help other people have enough too. Amen. You may go back to your grown-ups. Thank you.